Well, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us with very short notice. So we're pleased to have you all here. My name is Gabrielle Bardal. I'm Vice President for External Relations at the Parliamentary Centre. Uh, I will turn over to um, our CEO in just one moment, um, but just some uh, housekeeping here. We are on a Zoom meeting, uh, which means that um, it is uh, up to you to, to mute and unmute. Um, we thank you all to keep your, mukes, your mics muted until the Q&A. Uh, four questions, we would like them to be received uh, through the, um, by raising your hand and we will call on you. And um, other than that, we ask our guests to please keep the remarks to two to three minutes maximum. Uh, we do want to ensure that the journalists have the maximum amount of time possible uh, to receive your questions and to have that exchange. There is simultaneous interpretation available um, at the bottom of your screens. Please do uh, use that function. and. Um, with that, if there are no other questions about the logistics of this, uh, we will get started with words from our CEO, Tom Cormier. Thank you. Thank you, Gabrielle. And good afternoon, Dobrevecha, to our friends in Ukraine. The Parliamentary Center was founded in 1968 to support our House of Commons Committee on External Affairs to ensure our parliamentarians could more effectively address important international challenges. Over the last 53 years, we've worked in over 70 countries to help build inclusive democratic institutions because we know that inclusive democracies are the best way to ensure prosperous and peaceful societies. We're Canada's global leader for democracy. We're here today because Vladimir Putin and his autocratic regime were so afraid of Ukraine's democracy that they're trying to kill it. He is afraid that since independence in 1991 and despite great odds, Ukrainians have been building a more inclusive and transparent form of government, one with a vibrant civil society one with a growing consensus that the best way to ensure a stable and healthy Ukraine is through being a member of the family of democracies. We're very pleased to be here with the Agency for Legislative Initiatives, our civil society partner in Ukraine that has worked tirelessly for the last 22 years to help strengthen the Ukrainian parliament and democracy in Ukraine. We're also very pleased to have with us several members of parliament who have been democratically elected. Recording in progress. Members of the parliament um about the uh, their representatives of different factions um uh, on what is happening actually right now in ukraine this is first hand information as you already know yesterday at five o'clock in the morning kiev time russian federation launched full-scale invasion of peaceful ukraine this is not a conflict not an operation this is war um and i should say that most of our team are right now uh, in the shelters uh, around Kyiv. Uh, because we have, like, in two hours, probably, every two hours, we have an uh, announcement of uh, airstrike. Uh, audio Recording in progress. ...from official sources. We believe in the armed forces of Ukraine. The truth is on our side. Currently, the Ukrainian army uh, continues to repel enemy attack confidently. Ukraine is fighting, and we stay strong. Um, now I'd like to give the floor to our members of the parliament. Um, I'm not sure if uh, Ivan Kunpustizanza is, is already uh, connected uh, to us. Uh, no, I didn't see her. Uh, then uh, I, 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 I would decide, sorry, we, uh, mm -hmm. Ivana has asked me to have her word if she will not have connection. Thank you, sorry. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, th then I should uh, introduce um, Maria Ionova, chairwoman of the subcommittee on legislative support of the implementation of the strategic course of the state for full membership in the EU and NATO, enshrined in the constitution of Ukraine uh, of the Verkhovna Rada Committee on Foreign Policy and International Cooperation. Uh, Maria, please. Thank you, uh, dear friends. Um, I will be very concrete because Putin has changed the world order. And today, as never before, we see with our own eyes that the world is not responding in a proper way because the world does not react harshly and quickly. Now there, are, there is a large uh, scale offensive against uh, Ukraine in all directions. Putin's task is to take Kyiv in 48 hours. Uh, I will be very concrete. I'll try to be more emotional and uh, also uh, just to, to say the facts. 
what do we require? Introduction of no flying zone in the uh, uh, all over the territory of Ukraine and the closing the sky from Russian military aircraft. Disconnection of Russia from SWIFT, which will make it uh, almost impossible for financial institutions to send money to another country or abroad. Third, uh, asking, uh, we are asking now our EU uh, partners do not accept Russia's gas blackmail or the EU in the form of uh, increased gas supplies through uh, Ukraine's pipeline. This is a, a diversion only tactic to, you know, lessen EU sanctions. Fourth, uh, the introduction of an oil and gas embargo, which could accelerate the change uh, of power in the Kremlin or lead to the collapse of Russia. Sanction Russians central bank, which is backing the Kremlin's financial war chest. The assets backing the uh, uh, Russian central bank reserves are mostly in the West and sanctioning them will block Russian access to hundreds of billions of dollars. In addition, all those governments and parliaments we think that are now not acting and just, you know, online watching uh, the destruction of the citizens of Ukraine, the Ukrainian state independence and sovereignty online, in our opinion, uh, are appeasing, uh, appeasing Russia. Chernobyl nuclear power point. We know that Putin's goal, goal is to take control of the Rivna and Khmelnytska nuclear power plants in addition to the Chernobyl. And therefore we must act very quickly and, uh, uh, you know, to, to prevent the the Russians from attacking and capturing the Rimne and Khmelnytska uh, nuclear uh, plants. That is why we really call upon all politicians as publicly as possible to be. Also, not just, you know, as I said, not just to stand with Ukraine, but to stop Putin immediately, to demonstrate and put pressure on governments and heads of states uh, accordingly. Uh, I think that my colleagues will now share, uh, because we are um, expecting in Kiev uh, the aviation bombing, and now all people went to uh, bomb, shel uh, bomb, 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 bomb uh, shelters. Uh, and also now I, I just got uh, I just got news that uh, they are attacking all small airports because they would like to put land troops on near Kiev. Thank you. I'm ready for to answer your questions. Thank you so much. Um, before I introduce another speaker, uh, I would like to ask all the speakers uh, to be short and direct. In your oh, sorry. Say... I'm sorry. No, Marie, no, 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 no. I'm no. a member of the Parliament yeah. European Solidarity Committee of Foreign Affairs. I'm sorry. Uh, thank you so much. Um, uh, the next speaker I would like to introduce um, is Yegor Chernyov, uh, Deputy Chairman of the Verkhovna Rada Committee on Digital Transformation. Uh, Yegor, please. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, um, I would like to express my gratitude for your support. Uh, um, and I totally agree with uh, Maria what, uh, what she said about the list of sanctions that should be imposed right now. Even it, it should be imposed actually yesterday or two days ago, because uh, inaction in this uh, time will will lead to the further um, further actions from from Russia to from Russia Federation. Um, according to the data of U of the U.S. intelligence and the U.K. intelligence, actually Russia Federation faced right now the much more existent uh, resistance uh, that they expected before, and actually our. Uh, army and our civilian civilians fight with Russian Federation in in different cities in different towns. Uh, we control uh, all uh, big cities, all big towns, and the all, almost the the whole territory of Ukraine. But the situation is um, quite difficult because um, a lot of um, Russian troops uh, surrounded uh, Kiev. It's near Kiev, um, near uh, Kharkov, and other other our cities and towns. That's why we um, request to to impose the sanctions. 
As Maria said, it's uh, withdrawal from the SWIFT. Um, it's blocking assets of the oligarchs and the um, close cycle of uh, people who, who, who are close to, to, to Putin. I mean, this so-called uh, gold trillion of um, their savings uh, outside of Russia. Um, uh, it's um, also we need your um, technical and weapon support with um, weapon of anti-aircraft weapon, anti-missile weapon, because uh, actually this is one of uh, our maybe mm, weak uh, side. Uh, we have anti-aircraft, but we need more. We need more. Uh, so, um, and actually, the last maybe what I would like to say: this is not a war between Russia and, and Ukraine. This is war between authoritarian, uh, autocratic uh, country and world, and and democratic world. And if Ukraine will lose, the Western world will lose. Uh, we fight not only for Ukraine but for the um, democracy and the, for the values of, of our uh, Western world. So we do expect for your support. Thank you. Well, uh, thank you so much. And I would like to introduce um, Yulia Klemenko, who is Deputy Chairwoman of the Verkhovna Narada Committee on Transport and Infrastructure. Hello. Uh, probably you will not see me, um, but um, uh, but uh, I'm staying uh, on the street, so I'm just coming back from the territorial defense. I brought them weapon and food, so um, I, uh, I'm just stopped in the car in the middle uh, of the street. Uh, so if uh, ER strike will happen, I will not able to shelter. <laughs> Uh, sorry, uh, that's an um, introduction. Uh, what I want to add to my colleagues, and I'm fully support on sanctions, etc., and I'm fully support that this is not um, uh, actually the war between two countries, uh, former USSR countries, but this is the, I mean, this is dramatic change of ge geopolitical uh, uh, landscape, uh, because now if we will lose, uh, the democratic world will lose, basically. So the uh, authoritarian regime as well as the, the tyrannic regimes will uh, take over uh, for many years uh, and uh, <clears throat> And they will prove that they are more stronger in COVID fight, in uh, fight with the democracy, et cetera, et cetera. So this is the main narrative which uh, uh, Putin is saying, that the tyranny is more more effective than uh, um, than. Um, democracy uh, and he can win so uh, also i would like to add, add that uh, um, uh, that uh, many countries like taiwan like north uh, sorry south korea and many australia many countries now looking at, at uh, ukraine and thinking what will happen to them if uh, uh, partners and um, and allies will not uh, help them uh, and they will uh, and they will face to face with a with a big much bigger country china so now we have a very very i would say um it's it's a very sensitive moment in the world so we have to to uh, to look at it not only from the ukrainian perspectives but also from the world and geopolitical perspectives uh, the second uh, um, second my point and that uh, that russia is uh, really doing uh, i mean it's uh, it's uh, uh, it's a crazy it's just a um, and human things. So uh, uh, we will send you video if you want what they are doing with civilians uh, in our cities, with Ukrainians in our cities that are actually, uh, uh, you know, they killed, they're killing our kids. Uh, they just... Uh, um, uh, today they uh, uh, they sent uh, I mean air strike to to the uh, next to the uh, <clears throat> orphan houses and more than fifty kids has to leave uh, uh, and it's thanks God that kids were at this point of time they were um, uh, in the in the different buildings so they destroy buildings orphan building where orphan kids uh, were at this uh, at this point of t of time uh, they are uh, I think uh, more than uh, five. 500 people now killed, uh, I think, 
it, yesterday it was 300. I think today it's it's probably more. Uh, in uh, all over Ukraine, we have uh, a lot of people displaced from their uh, cities and uh, kids from their cities. Now we have a lot of people uh, moving to the west of Ukraine. So it's a very big migration process as well. So... Um, what we're asking you is not only your concerns and uh, and uh, mild sanctions, but you have to you have as a, as a democratic world you have to stop this violence in the middle of Europe, and you have to understand that if Ukrainian will fall down, then these uh, uh, crazy people uh, will move further to Poland, to Baltics, everywhere. So that you will not stop it, uh, and uh, this unfortunately you have to consider as well, as well as a big humanitarian uh, catastrophe which is moving uh, with the Ukrainians moving to the borders uh, more than 10 kilometers of um uh, of lines staying on the borders with Poland, Slovakia, uh, Hungary, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So please, I'm happy to answer your questions, but please consider this is not like a uh, war even between Russia and Ukraine. It's much bigger uh, things now happening in the world. Thank you. Thank you so much for your comments. We appreciate them very much. Uh, we are going to move to the question and answer part right now um, in order to allow the journalists the maximum amount of time to, uh, to ask their questions. I would ask all of our MPs, if you are able to turn a video on, we would appreciate that so others can see who is with us. Uh, the list of MPs that are participating was shared. So if you have a question for a particular person, you can use that. Uh, I'll start with a question from Ashley Burke, please. Ashley, can you please introduce yourself? Thank you. Hi, thank you for taking my question. I'm with uh, CBC National News in Ottawa. Um, Canada's placed 3,400 military members on standby in case they need to be deployed quickly to join NATO's response force in Europe. The Canadian government this week also announced another 460 military members would join the 800 they already have um, that are helping support NATO in Europe. Is this enough military support from Canada? Uh, let us give a voice to uh, Volodymyr Petrovich, member of the Committee of the Rhone Rado of Ukraine on Humanitarian Information Policy. Uh, Mr. Volodymyr. My, your mic, your mic. Mic, my microphone, please. Turn. turn. Uh, please, microphone, Pana Volodymyr. Good Good, uh, good evening. Uh, I will start. Uh, I will give you a personal. Uh, hello uh, to in Wurzel, a very quiet and nice uh, city. And for two days, uh, there is a full fledged war. In that uh, in that town, uh, there was under some shell uh, that uh, orphanage was destroyed with 50 people. And also, my house was under the uh, under also was ruined. And uh, and uh, the bedroom of my son uh, was uh, destroyed. And uh, at that time, uh, now, now there are uh, battles, and uh, Russia would like uh, to break through uh, to Kiev through that uh, town. Let's uh, move uh, to general things. Something which is happening around Ukraine. This is uh, the uh, the biggest uh, military operation in this region, starting where from World War Two. What is happening uh, with Russia? In, uh, what Russia does in Ukraine? This is uh, the biggest and uh, most intensive uh, losses which uh, Russia had uh, to incur since the time of uh, creation of Russian Federation. Never they had uh, such losses, uh, big losses and quick uh, quick losses. Uh, more than thousand uh, uh, dead and. Uh, um, more than uh, uh, 1,500 uh, wounded and uh, armed forces to Ukraine can fight and uh, they can uh, do uh, do real damage to the enemy. Yes, Ukraine I appreciate mobile, very much your, your comments and I'm very sorry to interrupt you, but I, I would ask, um, we have moved to the question period now. Um, are you able to respond to the journalist's question or can she please repeat it? Yes. Of course, we are very thankful uh, to Canada and to other countries uh, that for your military assistance, but we understand uh, that we need more assistance. We, uh, we would like uh, to count on the support of Canada, in a sense. Uh, there should be, Russia should, uh, switch, be, uh, should be switch, uh, switched off from uh, SWIFT, and, and uh, we need, we need uh, weaponry and continue provided that uh, and 
for us uh, to be able uh, to stop uh, Russian uh, aggression. Can, can, I, can, sorry, can I ask an uh, answer to the question? Uh, yeah, the, may I that was add or probably less. Oh, okay. So. okay. <laughs> yes, please add uh, and please keep your remarks brief. Mm -hmm. Okay, Sophia, since you're unmuted. No, 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 uh, no, 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 no. I was thinking that, okay, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so uh, I can tell you um, the, 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 the main issue. The main issue that to save lives of Ukrainian, it could be first, it's only close the air. That's number one. We understand that it's really very complicated process, but it's number one. Regarding weapon, yes, we know that uh, NATO also, they have agreed a support uh, for our air defense, and we really need it. Because while we were talking with you, for example, they are already in Khmelnytska Oblast. It's the center of Ukraine. They bombed with airstrike. So they use airstrikes already in different uh, towns of Ukraine. It's a very huge, you know, what is a, a, a air strike. So uh, that is why we could only be saved by closing air eyes. And uh, I just would like to underline and to share with you information that unfortunately regarding the humanitarian issue, they are bombing not only hospitals, but they are bombing uh, today in Kharkiv a blood transfusion center and there were, were 10 people were wounded. So the problem is that they really have very hard rocket attacks and airstrikes. And that is why we need weapon. And by the way, we have lines of people to uh, be in territorial defense groups. And, then, and in some regions, we don't have a nice and enough weapon to give people to defend their land. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, can I take another question from the press, please? Please you raise your hand and unmute yourself if you have a question. I have a question. I, I don't know how to, uh, can you hear me? Hear you. Yes. Uh, I, first of all, can you please help me with identification because uh, is Sof Sophia, um, um, an MP who was speaking because uh, he, she, she was introduced to us as um, as uh, as Maria. So I need to know who, who's actually recording. We'll send that in the chat. She was using she's yeah. using her daughter's Skype. Okay, got you. Thank you. Uh, I have a question. Uh, to Maria Maria Ionova. Просто вона в телефону Софії. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maria, Maria, Maria Ionova. Maria Ionova. Maria, there, uh, there is going to be um, a significant refugee uh, crisis. Um, people are leaving, uh, in, in probably in the millions, um, and um, it's going to be a crisis in Europe. But also, as you know, Canada is a uh, has the second largest uh, Ukrainian diaspora in the world, and uh, we would like to know uh, from MPs, obviously. You don't want to see this happening, but what can Canada do to provide refuge for uh, people who will be leaving Ukraine? Uh, you know, for recent eight years, uh, the Russian aggression and our war uh, uh, has shown that Ukrainians are staying uh, in their country and defending and trying, you know, to um renew their lives but of course now when there are the air strikes and uh, rocket attacks of course we will probably will have this migration crisis but uh also now we require this humanitarian support in all humanitarian organizations working in ukraine i know that our government is working hard but telling the truth now uh, i can't see uh, international like Red Cross organization or Doctors Without Borders. So especially on the east and Kharkiv and in Sume, I mean, on the north of our country and on the south where uh, they are attacking us from the sea and from Crimea. That is why we need really uh, inside our country uh, Inter international humanitarian organizations. But I can say that, uh, of course, if our people will see that there is support and help, 
I'm sure that, you know, only like women and children will go more far uh, to the safe uh, uh, regions and uh, um, districts, but uh, another people will defend their country. That is why we just really need uh, international organizations inside our country. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can we please take another question from the press? I see the hand of Lesa Vasilenka. Can we give her a floor, please? Uh, yeah, certainly. I was hoping she might be able to answer a, a press question. But in the meantime, yes, please, Lesia. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Uh, and thank you to our organizers for putting this together. Uh, it's extremely important now for Ukrainian voices to be heard. Mm -hmm. And with that, uh, I'd like to briefly address the previous two questions. So whether there's enough uh, troops, Canadian troops stationed around Ukraine to be ready to move into Ukraine. No, there's not enough. And it should not be just Canadian troops. It should be joint forces of uh, several uh, NATO member states who are also allies of Ukraine. And they should be ready to move in at any point. Ukraine is uh, countering the aggression of the biggest army in Europe, the third biggest in the world, and the nuclear power. Even if we worked and worked for decades and decades, our army would not match that of Russia in magnitude. So uh, we need assistance to be able... Recording in progress. They are not going to be involved with Ukraine on the ground because that might provoke a war with Russia. They are not prepared to risk the lives of their civilians. Excuse me. The world is already at war with Russia because if Ukraine mm. falls, the rest will follow in a domino manner. And you have to understand that and remember that. And your civilians are already in danger and at stake because your countries have already done enough to provoke Putin's paranoia about always being attacked by uh, all different countries around him. So really uh, sticking to the commitments as prescribed in international uh, agreements in the UN Charter and a million of different international rules which we seem to all follow as a global community, in sticking to those commitments, uh, there's a general responsibility of collective security and uh, in that, there's a general responsibility to keep uh, a democracy, a, so a sovereign state intact. And I very much hope and wish that there will be enough political willpower among the NATO allies and among UN members to do that. If we're not going ahead with the instruments of NATO, I can speak a bit if you're interested about mechanisms available to us within the UN without actually having to invoke Security Council. That has been done in 1950 in Korea, when it wasn't the Security Council who mm -hmm. sent the peacekeeper keeping troops, but it was the General Assembly. So that's also available out there. As for the refugees, the possible refugees fl flowing into Canada or other countries, the best you can do now is give we visa waivers to Ukrainians. Ireland have, has done so. Uh, and I believe that other countries can do the same, can follow uh, suit. Uh, it's important to understand that Ukrainians are a stubborn people and a free loving people. And we are staying put. We are fighting for our land. We are fighting for our families. And we are prepared to defend our country until the end. But there are categories of people, the children, the senior citizens who need protection. We cannot allow a humanitarian catastrophe and a real genocide of Ukrainian people committed by Putin to be exercised in the 21st century in Europe. So please open your borders to our citizens. That is it in answering to the, those two questions. I'm prepared to take others as well. Thank you. Thank you very, very much for those comments. Um, we will take other questions now. Um, I would like them, if possible, to be directed to some of our uh, other MP guests that are with us here, um, so they all have an opportunity uh, to add their commentary and views. Uh, if you have a question, it would be helpful to raise your hand or you can just speak up.
Could I ask a question, please? Um, uh, my name is Lisa Shimko. I'm president of the Ukraine Support Fund, and I wanted, I don't know specifically who to address this to, but one of the things we're hearing and we're concerned about is the rumor that there is a push in the White House to withdraw from the original idea that um, the U.S. and its partners would support the uh, Ukraine resistance movement. We are starting to hear rumors that of all sorts of legalities that this would somehow draw in Western powers into a direct confrontation with the Russians. Um, our, from, from what we're witnessing in Ukraine, the West is already in a confrontation with Russia. So I guess my question is, uh, have you heard any of these um, narratives circulating? Because that is something that I think would be morally defeating to the Ukrainian armed forces that currently are counting on a message of solidarity um, from the West. Thank you very much. Um, are any of the uh, MP guests that have not yet had a chance to speak, uh, are you able to respond to this question? Yes, please. Well, I, I can start, yeah. Well, you. Um, you know, I will start from the describing of the moral uh, moral spirit of our army and this is the highest level i think uh, ever before uh, we have um, the unity in our society despite of any um, attacks of uh, russia federation and despite of of course we uh, we disappointed of so soft sanctions uh, right now uh, from from the western world and, and and our army also because we are waiting for a strong sanction which will um effectively uh, influence on the uh, Russian economy of the Russia of Kremlin to, to Kremlin uh, and we we are expecting yet for, for these from these sanctions but it doesn't mm, influence on the moral spirit of our army because our army um, is strong uh, our, our, as strong as as ever before, as I said, and uh, we destroyed a lot of um, tanks and um, um, armed vehicles and, and aircrafts of Russian Federation, and um, Russia lost a lot of their soldiers. So we we are fighting, and we will we will continue to fight for our country for our territory for our nation, despite of any uh, steps of our Western uh, Western partners, but we do expect of your support. Thank you. Uh, you know, also, uh, our army is uh, relying more uh, not on Western support and Western opinion, but more on the unity of the Ukrainian people. And trust me, there is an extreme faith of the Ukrainian people in our army. Uh, we believe in them, we trust them, we support them, we will do anything to help them achieve the goals and the targets that they have to achieve in order to keep the Ukrainian population safe. And we hope that the West will follow suit, follow example, and uh, A, support Ukraine with military help, and B, come and show the support to Ukraine by standing with Ukraine, not just in Twitter, in hashtags, but on the ground here with our army, our military and our people. Thank you so much. Are there any other questions? May I, may I add uh, the answer to the previous question, please? Certainly. Yeah, uh, I just want also to uh, support my colleagues and say that, of course, in T014, uh, when we had a uh, destroyed army, um, by the way, by Russia Federation, um, anyway, I also remember that resistance which Ukrainian people have. But of course, nowadays, when our armed forces is absolutely um, different uh, uh, equipped and uh, um, all our common work uh, during all these years, uh, now we see the results. And of course, not only armed forces, which are our heroes, but also our people, Ukrainian, uh, in different levels. I mean, we see how our society is mobilized. They are uh, absolutely, you know, everyone, 
everyone knows their actions, everyone knows their responsibility. And uh, that is why uh, we um, really also rely on continuing helping uh, by weapon. And uh, Igor and uh, Lesse are absolutely right that there is such a unity that we, if you will hear any fake news, because you also know that how Hebrew informational war and propaganda is by Russian Federation, believe us, Ukrainians will never give up, never. It was during all our hi history by centuries. And by the way, regarding fake news, we are also kindly ask you really to pay attention to uh, uh, cyber attacks uh, management uh, uh, system, which has to be blocked because we have cyber attacks not only on our governmental governmental uh, um, uh, websites, but also we have very uh, a lot of uh, fake news uh, but again, uh, Ukrainians are ready and they also analyze not only information, but the sources of this information. If I could just follow up, I, I, my intent was not to question the unity on the Ukraine side. My question was the impact that would be felt in Ukraine if the flow of assistance ceased from the West. In other words, if there was a policy suddenly implemented by NATO that it would not forward weapons through a corridor to Ukraine because they, uh, as you mentioned, Russia is currently planning to seize nuclear stations and there is a concern that they're going to begin blackmailing the West, threatening them with nuclear war and saying, you see, we now uh, have control of these very dangerous radioactive elements. And if you continue to support the Ukrainians and in in a possible insurgency, we will not promise to be careful with those radioactive materials. So I'm, I'm simply asking, have you made it clear to your Western partners that that sort of blackmail is, is going to make sustaining this um, opposition to a Russian invasion very, very difficult? Look, we're in constant dialogue with uh, with our Western partners about all possible scenarios that can be born in the psychotic mind of uh, of Putin. Uh, but uh, this one, uh, it's as all the other scenarios actually. Uh, it's always about the question: uh, What do you choose? I mean, uh, again, to stand with Ukraine. Uh, apologize for that so to stand with ukraine it's uh, it's not just about you know words and uh, democracy in in theory it's it's in action are they really uh, going to let uh, a country as big as ukraine with 44 million people right in the middle of europe fall uh, into uh, russians imperialistic imperialistic demands well then that will mean uh, a restructuring of the global security structure, defense and security structure, and of international relations as we know them today, and also of international law as it is known today. I don't think that the world is ready for that. And we have confirmation of this from a variety of uh, our um, vis-a-vis members of parliaments from a number of different countries that no, the world is not ready for that because that will have a lot of implications uh, to uh, to different nations, both economically, socially, uh, environmentally, and so on. And, uh, you know, um, while the nuclear threat is there, and I agree with Maria completely, and uh, what they are doing at Chernobyl, God knows what they are doing in Chernobyl, but the world must, this is why we need Western powers in here right now to kick uh, the Russians out, because uh, Chernobyl is not just going to affect Ukraine or Russia, it's going to affect the whole world, and everybody knows that really well. Um, but to go in as far as blackmailing with, um, you know, um, destroying the nuclear power plants and uh, called uh, causing uh, a nuclear catastrophe in Ukraine. Uh, really, I mean, like the first ones who, who are going to die because of that are going to be the Russians themselves uh, in Russia. So uh, that's uh, that's a bit, you know, um, uh, that uh, th that's something that is like too too far fetched and that has good counter argument to it. But I hear your point, and uh, the short answer would be yes. Ukrainians are constantly on in dialogue with uh, our partner MPs uh, to make sure that uh, 
they get the point that we're not giving our country up and uh, that they shouldn't either. Thank you. Um, I think we have time for one final question uh, from the press, if there is one to be added. Uh, Hi, it's uh, Mike Blanchfield, Canadian Press. I don't know if you can hear me, but I unmuted. Yes. No, we heard you. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I just uh, wondering if any of the MPs can talk about uh, President Zelensky. Is he? What's the latest on him? <laughs> is he okay? And how big a threat is he is under? And if uh, uh, Yulia in her car out there somewhere can talk a little more about um, what it's like out there tonight and just sort of describe what it's like to be on the street doing what you did. Uh I can take this question on Zelensky because I'm from opposition party. <laughs> I will tell you the truth. Um, uh, actually, uh, um, I think Zelensky is doing much, much be um, uh, uh, better than I expected, I would say, because he is not a professional politician as well. He is not a, a poli politician as well. He is not um, a very experienced uh, um, uh, governmental uh, officer. So he is, do he is actually learning uh, by doing uh, and uh, also he is the probably the one of the maybe maybe second uh, uh, president in Ukraine who is a president in war with no experience and no uh, background uh, in this uh, area so I think he is doing well um, he is in Kiev, uh, so he is doing his job. Uh, as you know, we, um, uh, we, uh, uh, as a parliament, uh, uh, approved martial, um, um, martial um, law. So uh, now the president and the prime minister the, and the speaker of the parliament, there's three people who is actually uh, taking decisions uh, uh, fast, uh, quickly, uh, sending money, buying a uh, weapon uh, uh, and uh, giving, uh, uh, giving other orders that the country needed. Because we, don't, we, also, we, we are fighting, we are in war, but we also need to keep the country safe. So we have to, uh, to keep the balance between economic and social. Uh, um, uh, economic, social uh, issues, uh, and you know, when you are in war, uh, nobody uh, putting money in the country. So as well as uh, nobody, um, uh, it's everybody is trying to take out money. So it's and people as well as trying to take their money from the banks. So uh, when you have panic, but we don't have panic. We Ukrainians and the, our financial system is uh, stable, macroeconomic uh, system more or less stable. So the uh, um, exchange rate. Uh, drop by maybe by 10 percent uh, not more uh, and uh, we are uh, our economy is moving our social payments uh, uh, do, we are doing our social payments we're keeping our people we are paying for war so uh, and we are uh, in parallel uh, actually in war so in the military in different military orders so Taking all these uh, circumstances that we have in Ukraine uh, and uh, our poor um, response of our in international partners, I would say uh, that I am a position so I can do it. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, I think Zelensky is doing well. So uh, I think Putin uh, thought that Ukraine will fall down, will, will, will fall down, full, um, yeah, will. Uh, will fall down probably in uh, uh, 24 hours, as well as Zelensky will uh, capitulate uh, uh, also in, in 24 hours. But now we have almost 48 hours uh, and they are not in Kiev yet. Uh, and uh, I think uh, in uh, 24 hours or maybe in 48 hours, Putin will request for um, uh, a ceasefire uh, because he will need to um, uh, at least reorganize his forces. And uh, it's very difficult for them to, to uh, fight inside the country. Uh, because uh, each and every uh, person who is in the country uh, trying to get uh, weapon and gun and they are ready to shoot uh, people who is came to take their land and families. Uh, that's, consider all this summarizing. I think uh, at this point of time, we are uh, doing better than, ex than all expected. Uh, and uh, we will um, you know, fight. I do not believe that any sanctions as well as any 
paralyzed uh, very, um, you know, in, in Congress, in US, in Europe. They have a very different opinion about Ukraine. 50% saying, oh, why would you need to, to help Ukraine? Uh, let's Putin take care of them. 50% is saying, no, no, wait a second. It's, a, it's a not about Ukraine. It's about the much bigger uh, issue in the world. So let's help Ukraine. So, and this, this is, um, you know, the issues in each and every country I know. I talk to Americans, I talk to Europeans and uh, uh, Canadians, Canadians maybe, you know, less because we have a lot of Ukrainians in Canada. But in Europe, in US, uh, it's a very different opinions. Uh, but uh, we are not relying on these opinions. Uh, at this point of time, we are fighting, we will fight with weapon or without. Uh, and this, uh, this is not about, uh, you know, we are happy if you will close uh, um, the year, because it's very important if you close the year, we don't have uh, um, enough power to uh, to fight in the ear or in the sea so we need your support in in ear uh, uh, so close it please uh, close it uh, in the probably where you we have nuclear plants because this is uh, Europe's sa safety as well uh, in general uh, I think in next 48 hours we will see how it will uh, it will result but now uh, I would say it's stable. It's much better than everybody expected. Thank you for the long uh, for for uh, for listening to my long speech. Thank you, um, um, Volodymyr. Please, uh, some remarks from you. Uh, I'm sorry, but you're muted. Yeah, you. as a, 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 an MP from the opposition. I was one. I was criticizing Vladimir Zelensky and that he was not paying enough of attention to build uh, armed forces. Not uh, also that he didn't pay uh, a lot of attention about uh, the possible attacks of Russian Federation. But when the war has started, his messages are very correct, and it's very important for people that uh, he is in Kiev, uh, that he directs uh, sends those uh, messages uh, from Kiev. He's here and uh, so his uh, his me his messages are very good uh, for the uni unification of Ukrainians. Thank you very much. Do we have any final questions? Um, I have a question. Like, do you have an idea of how many um, people are still in Kiev and how the civilian resistance is taking place and how many weapons have been distributed to the civilians? Well, I can start in, uh, to answer this question. Maybe my colleagues will add something. Um, you know, uh, during these two days, we have a, a huge queue in 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 our um, uh, center of uh, gather, gathering center for for this um, territorial um, defense units. We have a lot of men who um, joined the, these uh, troops. Uh, according to our uh, data, it's uh, more than 20,000 uh, weapons was um, uh, delivered to, to these people just in these two days. And uh, 24, even 24 um, uh, thousand uh, So yeah, and it's not, uh, uh, it's not the end because uh, people just come and come and come. Um, this is the, the picture right now. Uh, probably I, I would ask if uh, Julia, uh, Julia Klemenka has uh, uh, more information, I mean, more detail regarding uh, territorial defense units, but also I just would like to say that, you know, we have more people volunteering who are ready uh, than, you know, even arm, even arms. That is why uh, we are absolutely sure that we, we, win, we will win. 
Yes, I will add. Uh, definitely, we distributed more than twenty five thousand uh, only for Kiev, uh, and it's coming more and more. Uh, and you have to uh, understand that uh, you know many Ukrainians uh, had um, um, hunting weapon. So uh, what I can see that uh, we have uh, a lot of weapon in 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 hands, uh, and a lot of people who are really coming by families and they are uh, they are um, just uh, coming to for the territorial defense and they are staying with uh, mm-hmm. uh, with the army and defending their uh, their cities their communities so uh, it's a, it's a huge amount of people today I just uh, um, I saw that more than 300 people came to the uh, territorial defense of Kiev uh, and it's one day uh, and they just stand the uh, you know, with a weapon or without weapon and waiting for the Russians to invade Kyiv. So uh, it's a really big, big amount of people who is coming and coming and coming. And not, uh, I mean, so I think it's in next few days we will have thousand people. Uh, Not, I mean, a lot of people left uh, because you have bombing, you have uh, airstrikes, uh, particularly uh, women with uh, kids. But uh, I mean, the um, Kiev is five million uh, people city, so uh, at least uh, more than fifty percent, I think, even more is staying in Kiev. So many people staying in Kiev uh, in shelters. Uh, so nobody, because you have critical infrastructure, you have uh, many other things you have to uh, take care of, uh, uh, and the people going you, you, uh, going for uh, going to work and coming back to their families, and they're staying and they're waiting, uh, and they are not going to capitulate any <laughs> in any way. Uh, today, I just. Um, brought a guy uh, who is in the railway stations. Uh, I uh, g- gave him a ride. So he is um, going 10 kilometers by foot, uh, by feet, uh, uh, just to go to the uh, his uh, uh, job, to place and to help evacuate people from Kharkiv and Sume. So he is actually uh, spending, I don't know, maybe four hours or three hours uh, just to to get to the uh, work and back uh, home and to help uh, people, uh, Ukrainians, uh, to relocate and, and drive his train. So it's amazing. Uh, and I would say I believe in, in uh, my country and my and my people and my army. So we will not, it will not be easy a task for Putin. Uh, Yulia, I'll just correct you, because from family and people, I'm sure that not 50% has left. I think that... Uh, maybe, uh, maybe. Maybe uh, people around... in in shelters. I don't know, because I don't see people in the street. Maybe people in shelters. I think that uh, probably me, uh, 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 around uh, more than 1 million people has been uh, left Kiev, but not 50%, I'm sure. Okay. Uh, We are getting to the end of our time here. Um, Unfortunately, I think we are going to uh, stop with our questions at this point. Um, We will be able to assist our journalists um, with uh, additional contacts. We are uh, working on that. I appreciate the request that we have received so far. Um, And uh, with that, I will turn it over to Tom and to Alexander for some closing thanks. Thank you. Tom, you're muted. Thank you. Thanks, Gabrielle. Um, I just want to thank uh, our brave and determined Ukrainian legislators and civil society partners for sharing your stories with us and being very clear with us that this is the time for action. And I I want to thank the media for their attention and their interest in the story. We look forward to connecting you. These stories need to be heard by more people. And uh, we're committed to being with you uh, in that regard. Thank you so much, Gabrielle. Thank you. Thank you much and close the ear, please. Thank you. Thank you. Alexander? Just for comment that uh, you may see the representatives of different factions from Rodin faction of Luhan Rodo, opposite factions, uh, European Solidarity and Holos. They are united at this moment and they uh, are united in perception of, of the situation and uh, in the demands of Ukraine, also from our international allies. Thank so, you. Thank you, and yeah, Slava Ukraine. Thank you. Miriam Slava.